Chcesz kupić taki? Hmm? Widzisz co, jest mąż. To sama sobie kupię. Pozwoliłeś kobiecie interes otworzyć, to teraz masz. Co, nie szwagier? Tak jest. Dlatego nasze nie pracują. Masz zdrowie dziewczyny. United States of Love lyder måske nok som titlen på en romantisk komedie, men den polske filmperle er tværtimod en hård nyser. Thomas Wasilewskis drama fortæller om fire kvinder, som døjer med ægteskabskvaler, affærer, ugengældt kærlighed og andre hjertesover. Og det endda selvom filmen foregår i 1990, efter det sovjetiske jerntæppe netop er krakaleret. Men i stedet for at opleve fryd og frigørelse, bliver kvinderne altså mødt med hård, opslidende modgang. Co pani dolega? Nie mogę spać. Przez to się ktoś nas zobaczy. Det lyder som en virkelig nedslående film, og United States of Love er da også virkelig barsk, men den er også gribende, rørende og vanvittig velspillet. De sublime skuespillerinder får os helt ind under huden på de fire kvinder, så deres smerte gør ondt på egen krop. Miłość jest trudniejsza niż to, co możecie usłyszeć o niej tutaj na niedzielnym kazaniu. Og historierne væves smukt sammen af Wasilewski, som både har skrevet og instrueret filmen, og som fortjent vandt en sølvbjørn for bedste manuskript på Berlinalen. Og Movie TV har talt med den 36-årige instruktør, som blot er en af de aktive polske filmmagere, som der har gjort Polen til en kæmpe kapacitet på den globale filmscene. I almost feel like there's almost a sense of irony in the title in the United States of Love because there's so much of obviously there's a lot of love in the film yeah. but there's also so much unrequited love and love that isn't fulfilled and and a lot of pain of course what is the, the thought behind that title you know all those women are united uh, in their emotion and I was looking for uh, the name of emotion because it's lust, it's sorrow, it's um, pain, but it's also happiness, it's uh, passion. So all those emotions are um, combined in love actually. When we think about love we, we can find all those emotions so all those women are united in those emotions. Uh, so it's United States of Love actually for me. And I, I know it's ironic uh, because when we think of, of love, we, we usually think about happiness. But then when I started to think about love, I noticed that the biggest, the most fascinating love is the love we lost, is the love we can never have, is the love we, which hurt the most. This love we remember, this is the biggest passion for us. I don't know, it's our, it's our, um, this is how we are uh, made, this is how we are built, you know, that we, um, the most, uh, something we cannot have, we always want. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's United States of Love, because all of them want that love, and it's really hard to get. It's really hard to explain, but every time when I start to write a new film, I write her, not him. So uh, it's very natural for me to talk about women, and they interest me um, the most, actually, because, you know, I, I have this feeling that women's soul, it's uh, not black and white, you know? There is everything in between, like 50 shades of grey, you know, <laughs> or even more. 100. So this is exciting for me as a filmmaker because my films are based on emotion actually. They don't have huge plot, you know, but they have huge emotions. And I need those shades of grey to tell their story. So uh, for me it's very natural to pick female character. You have four absolutely amazing actresses. Again, it's a, it's a really strong subject. They all have really strong, powerful scenes. How did you work with them on, on those? You know, uh, making film like this, it's always very intimate um, process. You know, I, I, um, I rehearsed uh, with actors for five months. And it wasn't rehearsing like acting, like just to, you know, tell them how do they should act because they're amazing actors, mm -hmm. they know this. What we try to do in, in those months 
was to uh, understand the characters. Mm -hmm. Because telling this kind of a story, we had to reach our emotions, our darkest, our, the, our most intimate parts, you know, in our soul and in, in our heart. And we had to trust to each other. You know, they, they had to know that I'm not going to hurt them. I'm not going to use them. We met a lot. We, we talked a lot. We talked about uh, those characters. We talked about their past. But we used our private emotions to understand their emotions. So very, very often it was a very difficult time for us. Uh, but very, very interesting and amazing. Amazing because it's, uh, we learned a lot. We learned a lot about those characters, but I think we learned a lot about ourselves. What was the biggest thing you learned about yourself making this movie? Um, you know, after I finished shooting the film, I had the sensation that I will never be able to feel anything again. Because it was those emotions, you know, this, this time was so uh, intense that after the film I felt broken. I felt a little bo more mature. I felt like I learned. It's hard to say what I learned, but I felt something inside, you know. And remember one of the actress, after shooting the film, she came to me and she said that, you know, this film broke all the feminine side in her, but at the same time she built a new one. And that was amazing. So it was a huge, huge journey for all of us. But it was very important to meet somewhere in that world of 1990 in Poland, right after communism collapsed. You know, all of a sudden we were free. We were able to change our life. We were able to go abroad, you know. But at the end, uh, we didn't have tools to do that. And even though they were free, those women were free, they could leave those blocks. But, you know, where would they go? There was no place for them to change their life. But what I didn't want to do is the Polish communistic film. It had to be universal. What I wanted is to get the sense of communism, not the story of communism. That's why I also wanted to work with Oleg Mutu. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a huge fan of his work. He's, he's a master, you know. Four months, three weeks, two days. Yeah, he's like the greatest DP in the, I think, in the world. Mm -hmm. And it helped that I had this background of living in a communistic country and Oleg the same. So we wanted to feel it under, under the skin, you know to give the sensation. It was very important to make this feeling that, you know, take audience from the from cinema and put them inside of the film. That's why I also use master shots. That's why I don't use music. To make it as real as I, you know, could make it real for the audience. And I'm comfortable actually, because if you see the film, you will find a lot of intimate moments. Intimate moments we have in our life, actually. So putting audience there, that would have to make it uncomfortable. It's like looking at other people or being, them, being with them in those intimate moments, which was amazing for me, actually, as a thought. So everything what we did with, um, with the structure of the film, as camera, as, as sound design, as lack of music, you know, everything had to help to put you guys into the film. And I think that really worked. <laughs> Thank uh, you. What, what, what did you do? Like, do you remember your first experience with the outer world beyond when, after the fall of, of communism? Do you remember the first time you felt like the world was open up and something had changed? Yeah, I remember uh, because I was, I, was, I was a young kid. I was nine, ten by that time, so I, I see, saw it from, from totally different perspective than my parents. And I remember, I remember uh, my first trip uh, uh, abroad um, and I, it was, I went to uh, France uh, in a bus from Poland and I, <laughs> I remember first stop in Germany 
in a, in, a, in a store I could buy orange juice and that was amazing for me that I actually could go to a store and get orange juice so I bought like 20 boxes of the uh, cartons for, uh, of the orange juice and I was drinking it in the bus and eating this this meat in cans that you know like were something we always ate because this the, that was the only kind of meat we could get actually so I got really sick after this m combination of meat and ju orange juice and this is how I remember my first freedom you know uh, being very very sick on the way to uh, to France <laughs> it's, it's interesting because we have this figure of speech you know the taste of freedom yeah and that was a pretty uh, that's a pretty bad taste in a way. Yeah. <laughs> but it was freedom. Yeah. Freedom is the most important, even if it's a bad taste. Yeah.